Welcome to lesson number 10, Education in Arts and Sciences. Uh, currently, we are now making the lesson live on a Friday evening so that people can watch it before Sabbath because people have said that they would like to watch the lesson, but churches are opening again. So this is for you then to still get the notes, get ideas that you can share in your own class during Sabbath hours. And for those of you that are joining at 10 still on the Sabbath, you can still watch the lesson at that time too, as it is already live on YouTube. Brian, welcome to our lesson. Thank you, Renier, and welcome to uh, our viewers, and uh, may the Lord bless us as we study his word. Amen. So can you just pray for us before we start? Sure, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. Wherever we are, whether it be morning, afternoon, or evening, you are the God who is omnipotent, omniscient, all-knowing, omnipresent, and there's nothing under the sun that is new. You are the one that has promised to give us wisdom if we will ask, and we pray that as we look at uh, this study, which involves education from the biblical point of view and contrasts it with the arts and the sciences, may we know that you are the God who is above and beyond the arts and sciences. And may you speak to us through thy word today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I read Psalm 19 verse 1, the memory text. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Now, God views his creation, I like this part of the lesson, as organic and purposeful. Mm. There's a purpose for us being here. There's a purpose for creation to be here. And today, we're going to look at the arts and the sciences from the Christian perspective and worldview. Maybe for some of you, you went through the lesson, you thought, oh, this is not the easiest lesson to, to chat about on Sabbath. What are we going to say? But I believe that God can still give us insights into a greater understanding of education and the arts of this and sciences in this lesson. On Sunday's part, we talk about the Lord alone. Romans 1, 18 to 21. We're going to turn there. Romans 1, 18 to 21. It says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in righteousness because what may be known of God is manifest in them for God has shown it to them. For since, and this is a powerful text, for since the creation of the world, his visible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and God it so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. I also want to turn to Psalm 19, and we're just going to read one of the chapter, the one text, and it's verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. And then Nehemiah 9, verse 6. You alone are the Lord. You have made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all their hosts. The earth and everything on it, the seas and all that is in them, and you preserve them all. The host of heaven worships you. But Brian, these are some powerful texts about God's creation and how the evidence in God's creation is there that God is God alone. There is no other God mm -hmm. as him. Even the Godhead can be explained through creation and through nature. Now, what do they tell us about the creator in this whole concept of the arts and the sciences? Renier, when you look at the world view, God is taken out of the picture and the arts and the sciences become in and of themselves the central focus. Mm. And, and that is the problem we have um, in a world view without a biblical godly uh, mindset and view. And, and, and here is where men fall and fail all the time. Because I think it's in Psalm 53 verse 1, it says, The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Mm. And so sometimes we might say, okay, you know, uh, well, you know, I believe in a God. I'm a deist, you know, but just, just try and prove and show me there is a God. Yes. Well, you know, 
You know, I'd like to say I'm a theist. I believe there's a God and there is reason to believe there's a God because we see in everything. Um, so if we were to leave the Bible out, which is the greatest revelation of who God is, um, you know, for the person who's, you know, a scientific person or a person who is really keen on nature, there's every reason to see. Uh, if you're an astronomer, you know, if you're looking into astronomy, uh, you'll see through the, the order. If you look at n the earth and, and how it's finely tuned for, for life, uh, God is not only the creator, but he's a sustainer. Um, and, and the reason why we worship him is simply because of this year. In Revelation 5 verse 13 it says, And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that in them I heard saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sit on the throne and unto the Lamb forever. And why do they worship him? Because in chapter 4 it says, For you have created all things, and for your honor do or pleasure do they exist and were created. Revelation 4 verses 11. So, so clearly the Bible shows that God is in contrast to every other religion is distinguished as the creator, but not only as the creator, Renier, but also as the one who upholds all things by his power. Hmm. And, and there's no excuse for those who look into science, look into the arts, and look into nature, uh, if they're really honest about it. There's no way these things can exist without supernatural power from a God who is able to do these mighty works. Exactly. I mean, if you even look at the variety of the creatures out there, the variety of birds and animals and <clears throat> how every human being can look different and how integrate the eye was created and everything in nature says that there must be a God. And yes. so many people have seen this, but they've rejected this knowledge. God is the, the creator. He is the sustainer. There's no question about it. And science proves God. It doesn't disprove God. It proves him. It's mm. just when we use true, science. Yeah. true sounds. When we use the, the right methods, we'll come to the creator. If we use the wrong methods and assume with the, the world, worldly mindset, we would come to the wrong conclusions that the earth is mm. billions of years old and that layer is because of that and that layer is because of that. And therefore... Um, there wasn't a flood because these layers are millions of years apart in the mountains, etc., that they're looking at. But yet there are evidence of some places where there's one tree that cuts through right. the layers. How in the world did that happen? <laughs> you know, that, that is impossible if they are millions of years apart. So this, this shows that God is the creator and the beauty in the world. We can draw from that hope that there is a better world coming. Mm -hmm. This world is not the end because sin has really marred this, this planet. It's not the way it was when God created it. But yet there's still a lot of beauty in it. There's still a lot to see that points us to Jesus. I mean, when, when a, a elephant, I love what, what I love about elephants is that if a youngster is struggling, they all will move towards the youngster and help and not leave until the youngster is helped. It just mm. shows that the, you know, even in the animal instinct created by God, there's this, there's this love for one another. And God says in that you can see that I love you and that you should love one another. So there's enough evidence that God lives. And, you know, if uh, atheists were to see, watch this presentation or this lesson, they would say, yeah, but that's what you all, you guys always say, but it's because it's the mm. truth. That's why we say it. Because it's the truth. <laughs> Brian. Well, Rene, if I may just add there, um, and if you look in um, verses 22 of Romans 1, it says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Uh, mm -hmm. And the reason why is because they can see the evidence, but they don't want to give credit to God. Uh, they don't want to retain God in their knowledge. To them, their own view uh, or their own knowledge is more uh, than the knowledge of the word of God. And that's where the mm. problem comes. And, and this is the mindset of the world today. And, and if you look at um, these great men, the great thinkers, um, and they may have several PhDs, 
they, 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 they leave God completely out of the question. I, I was intrigued the, the one time uh, when Steve Hawking was late, one of the most brilliant scientists, uh, is quite famous, world famous, um, said that um, the way how the world is continuing right now, if, mm -hmm. if man does not find another place, Yes. Um, we will self-destruct. And I just thought to myself, well, you know, even if you didn't find another place, I mean, there's, there's no place out there that's finely tuned for existence as it is on planet Earth. But mm -hmm. let's say they did find another place. I mean, the fact that man found that place, they're going to take the same corrupt uh, character to that place and, and, and the same old story <laughs> will continue. And just destroy there. that too. Yeah, uh, so, so really when you look at the Bible, God has got um, a plan. And, and, and when we look at, you know, the problem is when we look at the earth that God created, which was perfect without sin, without death, uh, it's hard to reconcile the world that we have today with that world when you take mm -hmm. that into account. But, but yet, even with all that, with 6,000 years of sin, we can still see so much evidence in the natural world that there is a God. And if we just look at our own bodies and how our minds work, the Bible says uh, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Why? Because we are made in the image of God. Yes, sin has corrupted that image, but Christ has come to recreate that image. And when we get in contact with the creator, we find that he begins to place within our hearts the true knowledge that leads us to recognize that God is God in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And, and what did that word say? And God said, let there be light. And so when we look at the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ, man, that, that is true wisdom and that's true knowledge. And when it comes to the planets, they are definitely habitable planets, but not close to us. Not what human no. beings can reach. Not in this, not in this life. Nothing it's like impossible. That. Nothing like that. And, um, yeah, as you say, if they were to, to find that, you know, they're really exploring Mars uh, to find a way to live on Mars, you would have to live like almost in quarantine all the time. Yeah. And then you have that sinful quarantine human beings in expecting that planet to survive. It's not going to. Same thing is going to happen. Can you imagine living in a space suit as well? And exactly. in these aircraft, I mean, you can't go out and enjoy the sunshine. You can't have fresh air. You can't exercise. You, you, you're in a place where God has not designed for us to live. And yes. the problem is man, man does not want to accept the heaven that God has created. Yes. And, you know, he heaven's a myth. But, you know, evolution. Oh, evolution. That's the truth. You know, even <laughs> though, you know, it's totally so warped and you, you need billions of years. And even then, you know, you need so much more faith. Uh, to accept evolution, then the little faith that can grow into great faith in the word of God. That is so true. Now, on Monday, we talk about the beauty of holiness. Now, we have spoken about this already in a lesson. And Psalm 96, 9 says, I worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, tremble before him all the earth. Brian, now we have discussed this before. I don't know if you want to add another thing to this. Um, at all, or should we just go to the next question about Genesis 3 and verse 6? Well, well there's something in there that I, I saw in Genesis 3 verse 6 for sure. Let's, let's go there. And also in Proverbs, because we, we're looking at worshiping the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And, and when you look at holiness, I mean, um, we are sinful beings. It says all have sinned and mm. fallen short of the glory of God. So, so only God alone is holy. Yes. But, but he's the one who says, I, I am the Lord that sanctifies you. Yeah. So just as, as God is the creator and he is the recreator, if we will unite and yoke our hearts and minds with Christ, then we, we can have that beauty of holiness. But holiness comes from being in contact and not just being in contact with Neil, but also uh, desiring and striving to be holy because uh, the apostle Paul says be holy in all manner of conversation I mean so so when you think about our conversations uh, before we speak we, we ought to think I mean sometimes people speak without thinking I mean Peter got into trouble lots of times doing that 
Uh, but but I think that's a, a human uh, weakness where we don't think. I, I, uh, someone said to be proactive is stop, think, and then respond. Yes. Uh, too often, you know, we, we don't. So, so when you think about connecting with the mind of Christ, no wonder Paul says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. And mm-hmm. so for us to have that mind, we need to spend time with that God. We need to spend time in his word. We need to spend time, of course, in prayer, communing with him, and then spend time in ministry with him. And that's mm-hmm. where I, I believe, Renier, the beauty of holiness comes. Because if we don't have the mind of Christ, then well, yes. I mean, we're just going to be gravitating to our own thoughts. Mm. And Spirit of Prophecy also says to us that Christian cheerfulness is the very beauty of holiness. Yeah, so yeah. that's the result of God working in your life. Um, right. But Genesis 3 verse 6, I agree. Let's go there. Genesis 3 verse 6. So when the woman saw that a tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took off its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate. And then Proverbs 6.25. Do not lust after her beauty in your heart, nor let her allure you with her eyelids. So, Brian, here the lesson focuses really on how that which is beauty can become corrupt. Right. Or how that is what is beautiful, even in the Christian sense, can be corrupted in a worldly sense. So, Brian, how do we understand right. this in the, the whole concept of being good, being holy, Christian worldview compared to the world's worldview? So, so when you look at, let, let's take the example of Eve then, uh, Renier, as we've just read there uh, in Genesis chapter 3. So, so, so she looked at the tree. It, it was beautiful for sure. God had made all the trees. Everything, it said, was good. Uh, it was beautiful. It was pleasant to behold. Um, and we can hardly conceptualize that because, you know, we look through uh, dark lenses, Uh, contaminated and tainted by selfishness and sin but nonetheless uh it was a tree that was beautiful and and when you think about this here um she in her own wisdom now decides to go against what god said and listens to the serpent and this is where the problem comes um no no matter there's there's always going to be two masters Mm. we've got christ who is the son of righteousness, the creator of heaven and earth, the one who wants to give us life and save us. And then we've got this fallen angel called uh, Satan, who was Lucifer, who was the son of the morning, who was uh, made perfect and says was created in wisdom and Mm. beauty. I mean, he had dazzling colors. Um, and, And that's how he dazzled Eve. But of course, now he's taken his beauty, which is now corrupted because he's rebelled. Eve presents to Eve you know, a distorted view of God, yes. a, a, a lie that God is withholding from you. And if you take of this tree, you will not surely die. In fact, you'll be like God. So, so there comes the issue, you know, with the world view and with God's view. The world will always gravitate towards something that is against God. And, 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 and here is the problem. So whether it's the sciences, whether it's uh, the arts, or whether it be, uh, you know, some people are really good at being creative in their work, you know. So, mm-hmm. so, so when, when we put God out of the equation and we look to either self or we look to the thing that self has made, it's one and the same thing. Mm-hmm. We, we are now, um, we've made an idol out of that. God is left out and, and, and the result is we have corrupted our view of uh, life in general and we are now led in the path downward and 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 god wants us up satan wants us down and and Mm. and that's where that's where the problem is that's where the problem is it is interesting how devil has done all this time what he did in the garden of eden and that's taking that which god has made beautiful and corrupting it if you think about the two institutions he gave in the beginning Number one, he gave the Sabbath and it was not in a specific order, but he gave this, God gave the Sabbath and the devil has come and totally distorted this day. 
Now it is a day for shopping. It's a day to do your banking. It's a day to do watch your sports, to play your sports. It's a day when you bride, it's a day that you party, etc. It is not a, and it's a day you work, but it's not a day for church. That, that's the last thing on the list, you know, if you're a Seventh-day Adventist or Seventh-day Baptist or, or a Jew. And he's totally corrupted that which is beautiful and made it ugly. He's made it so ugly that even when professed Christians mm hear about this beauty the sabbath and how important it is they say no it's corrupt i want nothing to do with it this is you're in a cult you're you're a sect etc and that's that's how far he's gotten the human mind to even reject the word of god in that which is beautiful and so many people miss out upon this beautiful institution so many people miss out on this rest that god has given us and then the second mm. thing that god gave in the beginning that is beautiful is marriage and then intimacy within marriage. And the devil has come and distorted that too. He's corrupted it. He may has made intimacy into this lustful thing. And pornography mm. has taken over the world. It's, it's how, ma uh, how many billions is made of pornography in the world. It's just mind boggling. And how many people watch it on a daily basis? I have the statistics somewhere. It is incredible how many people watch it and how many Christians watch it even in our own denomination. Mm. Now, if, if you're one struggling with this, I'm not saying, you know, that you're lost. If you're struggling with it, God can give you the victory. He's given me the victory 14 years ago. He can do it for you. And I'm going to do a video soon on our YouTube page about that topic. But the point is in the end of the day that the devil has corrupted that, which is beautiful. And may we return to the things that are beautiful, God's way in marriage Amen. and in the Sabbath. So Renita, just quickly before we go on to uh, the next seg segment, um, if, if again, Eve looked at it. So, so um, something needs to be done about how we look at things. We mm. always need to look at them from the perspective of God. So, so, so the devil says, and you've just given an example of pornography. Uh, the devil said, you know, this is something good for you. And he always turns everything that God has made for good for uh, the worst. So think about the sun, for, for example. God made the sun, and Jesus called the sun of righteousness to give mm. light to the world. The devil said, no, no, worship the sun. Yes. Um, so, so, I mean, this, is the sun important? I mean, we get so much benefits from the sun. Without sun, the sun, we don't have life, mm. S-U-N. But I want to say, without the sun, S-O-N, we have no eternal life. And, yes. and, and our, our minds are corrupted in this life um, because we have left the son of God out of our lives. So when you think about um, David says this year, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. Yes. Now, now he knew by experience when he looked at Bathsheba longer than he should have. I mean, when he saw the, you know, at, at the first sight, you know, there's, there's, there was no sin. He should have walked away from there. I mean, Joseph fled mm. from Mrs. Potiphar, but what did David do? He fed. He looked and he looked and then it says, he, then he desired her. Yes. And then his thoughts, you know, transformed into action. The next thing, of course, you know, we know what happened. Mm. Uh, so, so what do we set in front of us? Uh, if we're setting pornography, we are going to gravitate down to that. If we're setting Christ and his word and things that have a good report, uh, Paul sums up, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever mm. things are good, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure. If there be any virtue, think on these things. Mm. Um, look at these things. Read those things. And, and that's where the problem is. Um, so so when, when, when Solomon says, you know, don't let our eyes take you. I mean, he, he knew what it was to be led astray by women. Mm. Um, so he's talking from experience. You know, don't look at things. Don't go to places. Don't listen to things that a Christian should not do because be not full, the Bible says. Evil communication will corrupt good manners. Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. Tuesday's part is Experts in Error. Interesting title, Experts mm -hmm. in Error. Now, there are some pursuits which Paul warns against in 1 Timothy chapter 6. And I'm especially going to read verses 9 and 10. Yes. 1 Timothy chapter 6. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, 
and into many foolish and harmful lusts which draw men in or drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So Brian, this is one of the examples that Paul warns us again that don't pursue that. Right. Don't make that the love of your life. How can we understand this mm. in relation to this whole topic, what we're discussing today? So, so we can understand it because uh, when, when you look at the world, again, the worldview, they put education, they put the arts, the sciences, the making of money, business, they put that as the thing that is most important. If you strive for that, you know, um, you would have met with success. You'll be complete. Um, mm. and, and yet the Bible says we are only complete in him, in Christ. So look at the television advertisements, whether it's for a car or for something like that. Usually they'll put, a, you know, a scantily clad woman mm. and, you know, and then she's driving it or she's lying on it or she's posing next to it. And then okay, the men say, oh, I, I got to get that car. Um, so, so, so they use lustful images to promote something that, and, and many will go out of their way to buy that car, even if they can't afford to buy that car. And that's why Paul says the love of money, uh, not money, but the love of money is the root of all evil. I mean, mm -hmm. God has created money. He says the silver and the gold are mine. And you know, if, if, if we have money, like, like Abram had money, like Job had money, uh, then God wants us to use that money to glorify him and to be a blessing to, to others. So, so, so the issue here then is uh, Timothy was told by Paul, flee from these things because he says, uh, many who have gone after these things, they've corrupted themselves with many sorrows mm. um, and have been led into, he says, destruction and perdition. I mean, people end up going to jail, people end up murdering, people do all sorts of crazy things to try and accumulate this wealth, this money, these material possessions. And, and the, why, what is the reason? Because they're told, go out and get it. You must get it at all costs. Even mm. if it means lying about it, stealing and trampling on the next person. And, and, and that's, where, that's where the problem comes in. So Paul says, don't pursue that which does not bring honor to God. There's nothing wrong with money in of itself. Right. We need money to survive. Today, it's not just, you know, mm. you have your sheep and your goats as in Abraham's day, and then you're okay. You need it. You need finances to buy food. You need finances to buy seeds to plant or whatever right. you're doing, you need money. But that shouldn't be the be all and end all. It shouldn't be your love. The Bible, as Jesus said, first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then everything else will be added unto you. And once we've learned that Amen. lesson to, serve, to find Christ first, before we seek the others, it will make our lives so much easier. Then we won't become the experts in error if we seek Christ first and let him add what he thinks is best for us, what we are able to handle in this life. Some have way more than others. And both are doing the Lord's work. Both are walking in what God has revealed to them. It's because God gives to some more than others. And that is okay. We shouldn't strive for it and make that the, the greatest, the, the saddest thing in this world is when someone, they're probably sadder things, but in this context, is that when a person puts in all the effort, all their resources, all their time in getting that PhD, whatever field it may be, they get that position, they become the CEO or the, the, that desire that they have. They, they receive that salary that they've always wanted or their business reached this, the place where they always wanted to be, but then their soul is eternally lost. What have you gained? And they're never satisfied. And they're never mm. satisfied. They're absolutely unhappy. The children are spoiled brats. The, the, the wife is unhappy. The wife, you know, just doing her own thing, spending your credit card. And you're working yourself to death to, to maintain that lifestyle. And the wife puts the pressure on the husband. Yeah, I married you for this lifestyle. You need to continue this lifestyle. And it's, what a life. That's not life. Life is in Christ. And if he blesses you with more than enough, then praise the Lord. But as long as Christ is number one in your life. You know, the people had a different... So, 
Yes, Brian. I, I just wanted to, to say this story. Sorry, Zorn is quickly, but carry on. The world has a different worldview perspective of things. And this is what Paul is trying to, to, to show us. Even, you know, long ago, people said that the earth is the center of the universe. <laughs> How incredibly wrong were they? The earth is not even the center of our galaxy. So how can it be the center of the universe? <laughs> Brian, you wanted to, to add to that. Yeah, it, it shows the experts in error there. So how many times have um, great scientific minds changed their whole opinion, but never owned up to it? Never owned up to it. Um, uh, science biologists, scientists, bi biologists many times uh, have made um, statements only for the textbooks to be rewritten when a greater understanding or knowledge is, is revealed. But uh, I, I want to just uh, dwell on what Paul said to um, Timothy. He said, but follow or pursue after these things, righteousness, you know, godliness, faith, love, meekness, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so often we follow the things of this world and we are not satisfied at all. And then at the end of the chapter, he, he says, um, I, 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 I listened and I read that with um, some uh, sort of like, um, you know, smirk on my face. He, he says, keep that which thou hast committed to thy trust. Avoid profane and vain babblings. Uh, later on in, in the same letter, he says, people who go about doting about such things that are of no benefit and they lead to division. They lead to schism. He says, um, those who have followed false signs, he says, they have lost their faith and they have erred. Mm -hmm. so, so we need to be careful, you know, um, what we are focusing on, who we are listening to, who, mm -hmm. what is our mindset, what is our worldview? Is it, is it from God's eyes or is it from the world's eyes? You know, the scary thing in the end of the day, and I think that's what I can bring in here, and the foolishness and wisdom on Wednesday is when you think you're listening to God and you're listening to another spirit. <laughs> I think that's yeah. even worse than gaining the world but losing your soul, is to, to gain the spiritual status in your life, the spiritual wisdom that you think is from God and then it's not. So in Proverbs chapter 1, is a powerful chapter where um, Solomon compares foolishness mm -hmm. and wisdom. And verse 7 is... The punchline, what I believe, of chapter 1. Mm. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So, Brian, what is the key to have this wisdom and not be mm. foolish? So the fear of the Lord, many times people read it and they think that it's talking about being afraid of God. And it's never that. Every time God shows up, he says, do not be afraid. Do not be yes. afraid. Um, so the fear of the Lord is recognizing who he is and that uh, without him, we are lost and without hope. But mm. with him... We have everything. And I think um, as we look at on Thursday, Job's experience, uh, he was confused about a lot of things. Uh, and then God led him to realize that, listen, if you understand uh, that this is who has created, this is the same God who is able to set your mind free mm -hmm. from those things that uh, are causing you to have a wrong concept because his friends had put a wrong um, impression upon who God is. Yes. I mean, and who he was. And, and, and so, so God was trying to make things right. And, and, and Job got it right. Eventually, mm. at the end of the chapter, he says, okay, uh, I will say nothing because with you, all things are possible. All things exist. And, and, and that's true fear, recognizing that God's ways are higher than our ways. Mm. That um, he is creator. He alone knows what is best for us. And he's placed in our hearts and our minds a desire for him. And if we allow that desire to flow out to him, he will give us the joy of our heart. And that's where people miss out because we pursue the things of this life 
and we find out, wow, you know, empty, empty. As Solomon said, I had all the women I had, I found in vanity. Mm. I had all the money I had, I found in vanity. I had all the knowledge and wisdom I had, I found in vanity. Because at that stage of his life, he had left God out of his life. But when he had come back full circle, back to the God who gave him the wisdom, who gave him the riches, who gave him the honor and the position, the power, then he realized that mm, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So, I mean, if there's anyone that God could have chosen to write this, Solomon is the mm. perfect guy. Right. In this context of the pursuit of happiness in this world, you know, position, money, that right woman, etc. And Solomon says, I had all of it. <laughs> I had the wisdom from the beginning when I asked for it. I had the, the, um, the woman. I've had the money. I have had the position. I had all the children. Everything that you can imagine in life, I had. People admired me. They were actually, they loved me. They would come to me just to listen to what I have to say. And all of it is vanity until I have the fear of the Lord. And the wisdom that comes from that fear is the wisdom you need to desire. That's mm. the wisdom, wisdom Solomon desired in the very first place when God asked him, what can I give you? And he said, I want wisdom. But then he gave, used that wisdom in a corrupt manner, going against the beauty that God intended it to have in the beginning. And he had everything. He turned from it, and praise the Lord, he turned back. And he writes the, probably the, the most depressing book of all of the Bible is the book of Ecclesiastes. Um, and that is, everything is vanity or in vain. Yeah. But, and then he concludes the book in Ecclesiastes 12 verse 13. But this is the conclusion of what I have discovered. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For there lies perfect Amen. peace. David also wrote, mm. um, Great peace have they that love thy law. So it's within the will of God. There you have the peace. And right. you mentioned Job and that's Thursday's part where the Lord answered Job. Yeah, we know the story where Job went through this horrible experience of losing everything, but then questioning God about what in the world's going on. But the Bible says he never mm. said against God, but he questioned God no, no. as to what went on. And then his friends comes and makes his life more miserable during the time that God is working with his servant. Mm. And then his wife turns against him and he loses his health and he loses all of this. But at the end, as you said, he realized what God was trying to say to him. And Brian, what was that? We see it, especially also in Job 38, where God says to him, can you do this? Can you do this? Yeah. What can we learn from that, Brian, in context of this lesson? So we, we can learn about, I, I believe we can learn the lesson that Job learned. Because as, as God asks him all these questions, you know, uh, think about, you know, the ego. Uh, how she takes care of a young, you know, think about the lion, who, who feeds the lion, uh, who, who, who has the food that they need. Um, can, can you loose the bands of Orion? Can you guide Arcturus, Pleiades? Can, can you explain all these mysteries, Leviathan? Can, uh, you know, so, so God asks him question after question. And, and of course, Job had no answer for, for each question. So, so God led Job to place to realize and listen. Because I am the one who not only created but sustains the world, the earth, the universe, then I am the one that can take care of your situation, Job. And Job mm -hmm. finally yielded to God. And of course, we find that God restored to him um, much more than he had before. And of course, Job had faith that, that, that never let go of God. And, and yes, he had questions. But God, God says, bring your most profound questions, you know, but, but trust me. Uh, I of the answers. And, and sometimes, you know, we, we don't like the answer God gives because sometimes God says, wait. Uh, sometimes he gives us an answer there and then. And, and, and sometimes God will show us through difficulties and trials, as was Job's experience, how to fully trust and depend upon him. And, and that's where lies the problem with humanity. You know, we, we are in a world where we want the answers now. We want our food, you know, it's fast food now. We want uh, to be rich right now. We want everything we want in life right now. Um, and that's where we fail. And, and the Bible says that 
trust in the Lord and wait upon him. Uh, and he will satisfy the desires of your heart. And that, that, that's where we ought to be. So, Rene, as we look at um, this Bible study, are we against the arts and sciences? No, we're not. There is so much of beauty in the arts and sciences if it's through the lens of God. But the arts and sciences, as it is from the world, it's corrupted, it's sensual, it's lustful, it's selfish, and it's self-destructive. But when we look at it from God's world point of view, and then we see the beauty of the rainbow. Oh, the devil takes and corrupts that. We see the beauty of the sun, he takes and corrupts that. But see it from the eyes of God. And, and, and Renier, this is the lens, the word of God. If we don't use the word of God, then we are going to end up being corrupted for sure because there's only two powers, Jesus Christ or the devil. And he will certainly take over if we will not give our lives wholly, totally to God. Amen. Thanks for that summary. It's a perfect summary. I have nothing to add to that summary of the lesson. And for the viewers, may God bless you on this Holy Sabbath. May you spend wonderful time with him and your family. May God protect you against the evil one and carry you through your trials. Brian, let's just pray together as we end off. Father in heaven, we pray that through your spirit, we would see the divine hand working in our lives, in nature, and showing us who you truly are that we may have the beauty of holiness in you. Amen. I pray that we would not be distracted by the pursuits of this world and that which the devil has corrupted, but that we would stay close to you and desire Christ in his character. Mm -hmm. We pray this in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.